Amy was adventurous and reckless, with a dry wit and a stubborn streak. She had a difficult childhood being an orphan raised by her aunt, her parents having been wiped from existence by the time field in her childhood bedroom. She felt abandoned by the doctor. And the doctor when he returned. Or even herself. As a child, Amelia was stoic and able to care for herself. She prayed to Santa Claus for help with the crack in her wall and was unsurprised to meet the doctor. She lusted for the adventure of travel with him. When he did not return, she grew into a cynical and aggressive young woman. During her earlier adventures with the doctor, Amy showed she could be very clever and observant. When they encountered the last of the star whales being tortured by and carrying 29th century humans from England, she saw how similar the star whale was to the doctor, in that they were both the last of their kind and couldn't bear to see children cry, realizing that stopping its torture wouldn't kill the humans and spared the doctor an incredibly painful task in making the star whale a vegetable to prevent it feeling further pain. She also prevented the oblivion continuum inside Edwin Bracewell from going off and destroying the earth, while the doctor was unsuccessful in doing so by having him feel the pain of traumatic events, such as the loss of his parents, Amy got him talking about a girl he was once in love with, successfully disarming it. When in peril when a recording of a weeping angel was climbing out of a television, she was told that, anything that holds an image of an angel becomes itself an angel. She realized that she could kill the angel by pausing the recording on a blip, breaking the image. With the exception of her traumatic experience in the forest aboard the Byzantium, and mocked the Cyberman without a body. Amy was also very flirtatious. In Ledworth, she worked as a kissagram. And the Roman soldiers at Stonehenge. And a computer. Rory claimed she only passed her driving test on her first go because of a revealing skirt. Amy also once flirted with herself when the TARDIS materialized inside itself and this meant she got to see two versions of herself from the future and flirted with both. She had no problem being naked in front of the doctor after a mutation into a butterfly woman was reversed. However, despite being flirtatious herself, she proclaimed that, I will not have flirting companions, and was especially bemused when the doctor and River started flirting just before rescuing her from the silence. Amy was troubled and lonely. She was often left alone by her Aunt Sharon, who refused to deal with her fear of the crack in her wall. After meeting the doctor, she was obsessed with her, raggedy doctor and refused to believe he was imaginary, biting psychiatrists when they tried to convince her otherwise. Mel's, a school troublemaker, her close friend and daughter, once pointed out she often misbehaved in school. Despite this, she was a protective, maternal figure for Mel's, leading her, while regenerating into River Song after being revealed as Melody Pond, to remark, you got to raise me after all. Although she seemed dismissive of Rory early on, Amy eventually began to respect him. Amy grew to love her husband, Rory, passionately and called the doctor her best friend. She felt he could fix anything. And Vincent van Gogh. She broke down in tears when the doctor left her on earth with Rory. Once she discovered that something had been done to her at Demon's Run which made her sterile and unable to give birth to any more children, Amy tried forcing Rory out of her life to give him a better chance at having children with someone else. In her time on the TARDIS, Amy was heroic saving the lives of the Doctor, Rory, River and others. She was willing to remain in the clutches of enemies to let her friends escape. She was also ready to fight to save others. Like other, complex space-time events, she could remember alternate timelines to a degree. Additionally, Amy's mind, altered by her growing up with a crack in space and time in her bedroom wall, subconsciously held memories of beings and elements which had otherwise erased by the total event collapse. Having learned that time could be rewritten, she was sometimes unreasonably optimistic about such things, hoping against hope that there was a way to rewrite the events at Lake Silencio even though they had been turned into a fixed point in time. She initially acted with prejudice to the ganger doctor, viewing him as a monster rather than a valid continuation of her best friend, though she later came around. However, she was also able to empathize with the star whale sustaining Starship UK and realize that it was actually acting out of kindness rather than enslavement, something which had not occurred to the 11th Doctor. Amy showed a ruthless streak. In an alternate timeline, Madame Covarian was being killed by her eye drive and was able to get it most of the way off. She asked Amy to help her because it was what the Doctor would do. Amy said, he's not here, and put Covarian's eye drive back on killing her for having stolen her baby from her. She was conflicted about this later. 
Amy's worst fear was being, the girl who waited, which stemmed from her childhood of waiting for the doctor to take her with him in the TARDIS. This fear continued into her adulthood when she became worried about a day where the doctor might disappear from her life forever, and she would continue to spend her life waiting for a return that would never come. During her adventure aboard the Silurian Ark, Amy told the doctor that she had quit her recent job. She admitted that she could not settle down because she was always listening for the TARDIS to materialize nearby to take her and Rory away. Amy described herself to Eldritch Valdemar as a science fiction fan. She cited Jules Verne as an example of a science fiction author whose work she had read. Amy also shared the 11th Doctor's fondness for fish custard, 